This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This video is going to go through and summarise the chapter that you have on divestments. Uh, so divestments are effectively looking at an exit strategy. So your business has grown via acquisition or maybe some form of organic growth, uh, which, which was very prevalent, wasn't it, in the 80s and 90s. And uh, there was there's a wealth of, of cash around. Businesses were buying other businesses. Uh, globalization was taking hold, wasn't it? Uh, and we got all of these large conglomerate businesses and okay, these massive multinational organizations that, you know, they may have been headquartered in the UK or in the US, but they had subsidiaries and parts of the business operating on a global scale. However, following the, the, the crash of 2007, 2008, and a lot of businesses getting into financial difficulty, uh, we've seen a lot more divestment whereby businesses have started to streamline to go through there and try and focus on the on their core operations okay uh you know if, if you you think about and it's not a divestment but it's just an example about your core operations uh if you live in the uk and you've heard of a, a business called primark uh i may have mentioned it on one of the earlier lectures which is a low cost clothing business uh in the uk on the high street okay uh Everybody knows Primark, but Primark uh, is owned by AB Foods. Okay, so you know that 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 that's a business that has one part that focuses on uh, harvesting and producing foods for consumption by the general public, but uh, the other part of the business is buying and selling clothes uh, as part of its retail operations on the high street around the UK and I think Ireland as well, and it may be expanding overseas to Europe. And you know, w w without that low cost retail business then ab foods would not have done as well as it has over the, the past few years okay uh, but it gets to a point whereby being able to manage and operate the whole entire business is just too cumbersome okay it's too difficult from a time perspective it becomes too costly uh because too much time is spent focusing on loss making operations or underperforming parts of the business so therefore, we need an exit strategy. We need to go through there and divest part of our business. Uh, and what we've got there uh, to go through and start off with is that we're going to go through and just briefly mention, I think, if memory serves me right, uh, there are four divestment scenarios or, or exit strategies, aren't there? Uh, first one that it mentions, I think, within the notes is a demerger. Okay, uh, second one is there as a sell-off, and then what you have there is a spin-off, and an unbundling, okay, uh, you just need to go through there and know what each type of divestment strategy involves uh, so let's go through there first of all and think about is it a demerger okay uh, with a demerger what happens there is that as a result of the demerger you have two separate firms that are then set up okay so the business has got so big you want to focus uh, would it be there on you you core operations uh, so therefore what you will go through and do there is that you take your large conglomerate and split it out into two separate businesses two separate new businesses effectively and um, one of the more recent examples that i can think of there uh, do i call them hewlett packard or do i just call them hp uh, it's not HP Source, not House of Parliament Source, uh, that's uh, operated by Heinz there, and it's not Heinz, is it, whoever it is. Uh, HP Source, uh, no, Hewlett Packard, uh, the computer, uh, the printer business, okay. Uh, they've gone through there, and HP as a business was separated out into, I think it was HP Inc., and if I get it right, uh, is it the HP? 
Enterprise, okay, uh, where I think HP Inc. focuses on your computers and printers, uh, and HP Enterprise focuses on other hardware and services, okay. Uh, so they are now two separate businesses, but if you previously owned shares in HP, you would then have a share in HP Inc. and a share in HP Enterprise, but uh, the HP business itself was was separated out. Again, that then means that HP Inc. can focus on what was HP's core business, which was possibly doing uh, better in terms of the computers and the printers, and then attention can then be dealt with elsewhere on the hardware and services. Is it there for, for HP Enterprise? Okay. Uh, if you like what effectively you've got, is a little bit of reverse synergy okay so when we make the acquisitions you, you've got the synergy gains uh, is it 2 plus 2 equals 5 isn't it effectively you've got that one of synergy that, that brings in through cost savings here it's like a reverse synergy in that you make gains all right initially it might be quite costly running the two entities because it costs quite a bit of money to put in the new directors the new staff uh, but if you reorganize the businesses and then streamline them and make them more efficient, then you've got effectively a short per or short term hit uh, for, for a long term gain, isn't it? Short term pain for long term gain. So by separating out the businesses, they can then go through there and, and effectively release value to the shareholders. OK, because when HP Inc. was was merged in into the whole HP business, the value wasn't, if you like, revealed to the shareholders, okay, and they couldn't then take that value from the business in terms of buying and selling shares because the enterprise part of the business was, if you like, dragging it down, okay. Uh, in terms of a sell-off, that's not separating out any particular part of the business uh, or, or separating firms. Uh, that's going through there and selling off part of a business. Or part of, a, say, a portfolio of shares, and it's usually the maybe some unwanted assets. So although it's not not technically diverging or uh, divesting part of a business, the UK government uh, wanted to go through there and sell its stakeholding in Eurostar. Okay, uh, it was an unwanted asset. You know, other people could take that shareholding and, and, and do something maybe better in terms of what the government were doing in terms of their investment and it allowed the UK government to, to, to bring in much needed cash okay uh, likewise uh, another example there I suppose it's a better example uh, is talking about Pfizer and again you can look these all up on Tinternet if you so see fit uh, but Pfizer sold part of its business I think it had something to do with, with, with baby care, okay, uh, or, or food care, uh, to do with babies, I'm not too sure, I can never remember, uh, but Pfizer sold part of its business to Nestle, okay, uh, it didn't want to do it, it wanted to focus its attention elsewhere and develop other drugs maybe uh, that were much more lucrative, uh, Nestle was probably a little bit more experienced in that part of, of the business, so therefore uh, Pfizer went through there and sold that part of the business. Obviously, there's issues there, aren't there, uh, with regards to the Competition Commission and whether or not Nestle are allowed to buy that part of the business, but uh, that's something additional to go through there and be aware of. Okay. Uh, a spin off, effectively, it is like a form of a demerger. Okay. Uh, so, what happens there? Is that a new company is created which was previously part of the old one okay uh, so you've got a big and large company when a demerger happens they, they split into two and that old one ceases to exist as an entity which was what happened with HP uh, but with the spin-off what happens you have that large entity and it takes part of the business and spins it off, okay, and separates it out and forms it as part of a new business with its own separate legal identity, okay. Uh, again, examples that you could go through and use there uh, would be Kraft. So Kraft, the US food company, uh, went through there, didn't it, and set up, let me spell it right, I think it's Mondelez. Okay, uh, which if you're Spanish, 
uh, means delicious world. Okay, uh, and effectively that was part of Kraft's business that was its global snack foods business. So was it there? If you've heard of Oreos, if you've heard of Milka, uh, Mondelez was spun off as a separate business. Okay, uh, usually that the spun off company is much smaller. I suppose comparatively Mondelez is smaller than Kraft, but Mondelez by itself it is still a very large company. Okay, if you were a shareholder in Kraft, you would have kept your share in Kraft. You would then have a new share in Mondelez. The key bit is that then from a spin-off perspective, no money is realized from Kraft. They are not selling anything. It's not a sell-off. Okay, so they're not generating any cash, but again, they're looking to go through the uh, and craft focus on their core part of the business. They're not generating any cash, but uh, hopefully their Mondelez will go through and trade, and it has done uh, and has been very, very successful since. Okay, the share price has grown uh, since Mondelez was gone, or Mondelez has been spun off as a separate legal identity. Okay, uh, when we're going through there and looking at your unbundling, uh, again, very similar to a sell-off but that's just separating out parts of a business uh, with a view to then going through and actually selling them. A sell-off is saying right this is the bit of the business that I'm going to sell. Uh, unbundling is effectively taking more than one area of the business uh, and trying to separate it out so that then it is much easier to go through there and to be able to go through and sell that business okay uh, so a sell-off and unbundling generates cash spin-offs and demerges tend not to go through there and generate you tend not they don't go through there and generate any cash okay again these divestments will be subject again to the competition commission so that needs to be thought of as well but they are for now that the four main areas that you would need to be familiar with with regards to your divestment. Again, I make sure there that you go through and read the study text. Uh, there'll be huge amounts of detail within there. There's bits and pieces within our class notes, but also as well, don't forget to go through there and have a play around with the question to get a flavor of how this is examined because there's not gonna be any numbers. It's gonna be narrative style questions, isn't it? Okay, yeah, qualitative aspects whereby you're gonna have to maybe gi be given uh, a scenario and then use that to scenario to work out what type of divestment it is. Is it a demerger, a sell-off, a spin-off or is it an unbundling? Okay, so have a go uh, and see how you get on because what we're going to go through and do now is we're just going to go through and have a look at a particular part of uh, an exit strategy which is there as your management buyout. So let's go through and have a look at a management buyout. So obviously abbreviated to MBO for short. Uh, and what we've got to go through and do that is I think from your perspective, you need to think about what a management buyout is. I think it's quite literal, quite easy to understand. Uh, why would that actually go through and happen? Uh, and are there, I suppose more importantly, any issues that you need to consider? You can make your own notes if you like as we go along. Because what a management buyout is, I've said it's very literal, uh, it's the buyout of a company by its management. So you've got your management that are running a subsidiary that are controlled by the parent. And obviously the parent has a lot of power over your, your, your management decisions, doesn't it? Okay, you are there being told what to do by higher level management. Uh, and it could be there that, that you're unhappy with, with how things are being run uh, from the top. It could be that your business that you are managing effectively uh, or being told how to manage, it, it could be loss making, it could be struggling and you think that you can do better, okay? So therefore what you do is you propose to go through the and buy that company from the parent company okay so you will buy out that business okay so therefore what will then happen subsequently is that that subsidiary will now be trading by itself with no links if you like to the parent and it will be there run by management okay uh, so it'll be the management maybe some directors 
Uh, and also as well, you will get involved in terms of the finance, maybe some venture capitalists who will provide large amounts of finance, but they will want to say in how it is run, okay? Uh, and they will want, if you like, a controlling stake or maybe a seat on the board uh, to help you along, okay? Uh, why is it done? Uh, well, as I said, you, you're effectively taking over the business, maybe because it's loss making, you're unhappy with how it is being run. So therefore, you're, by taking it over, you're looking to improve the business, uh, increase revenues, maybe reduce costs. So there could be, if you like, uh, some methods there that you can reduce costs, maybe with regards to, to cheaper premises, uh, less head office costs. Uh, there may be fewer recharges that are due uh, that were previously owed up to the parent company. So maybe you can do things cheaper and better okay and um, maybe because the business was lost making there was the threat of redundancy and therefore we can go through there and prevent that redundancy uh, if you were to look at it why the parent company would allow that to happen well it may be that the reason why it's making losses is because it was difficult for them to, to run uh, it didn't fit in with the core part of the overall group business so therefore it's better uh, that it is then sold on to the management and allowed them to go through their uh, and run it by themselves okay likewise it prevents maybe the redundancies and therefore that would be a very costly impact wouldn't it uh, within the overall set of group accounts okay and hopefully what will then happen overall is that once the business has been separated out it will improve and therefore the value will be created uh, so therefore even though it's very costly is it there for management to buy out the business they will leave all sorts of finance, not just their own personal finance. Uh, they would also need finance from banks, venture capitalists. So it's very expensive. There will be a lot of restrictions in terms of covenants on the loan. So it will be a challenge to manage. But as you go forward, you will be able to increase the value of the business and grow it yet further to the point whereby it will then be an attractive target for an other predator company at some point in the future. Okay. Uh, issues that you could potentially go through and have. I think the main one uh, is making sure that you have the finance available. Uh, once you've got that finance in place, I think one of the big issues is ensuring that it can be repaid back. So obviously you need to make sure that you've got enough money to pay the loan that you may have taken from the banks. But also as well in terms of the venture capitalists, they want a very high rate of return, don't they? So you need to make sure that you've got a quick fix of the problems within the business and then there's an exit strategy at the end, okay? So whether that is buying out the venture capitalists as management or maybe selling the business on to, to another predator company, okay? So the, the capital and raising the capital can be quite of an issue. Uh, other bits and pieces, uh, you could lose economies of scale. That could be an issue. Uh, it could be that some of the advice that was passed down uh, from the parent company previously may be lost. Uh, there may have been some services that were provided by the parent company that will be lost. So maybe HR and payroll. So that could be quite uh, a cost to the business. But again, it's short term paying for ultimately long term gain. Always think about uh, tax and legal complications uh, as, a, as a smaller business operating by itself. Uh, you may not be. Uh, able to utilize the losses uh, maybe they've been group relieved up to the top or however the tax regulations may work there's also legal compliances to go through and, and, and operate as well in terms of how the business is structured uh, so there are issues that you need to think about okay but most of the time it should work okay uh, provided that the management are motivated you know if, if you're buying out a business and you're running the business as well as owning it at a thought you would be motivated to do it you know otherwise what's the point okay so i think from an exam perspective again there's, there's not going to be any numbers examined it's just going to be a pure knowledge and application scenario of being able to know what a management buyout is why it's done so looking at it from both the management buyout perspective teams and the sellers perspective and then the issues that you've got in terms of the finance and then just general problem areas that there could be okay 
other than that, I think the only little bit that's left within the chapter, I think, is it mentioning about going private, okay? Uh, so that's the, a situation whereby you have a listed business, and maybe it's a relatively small listed business, and the costs and the processes of ensuring that you meet the regulations of the stock market that you are listed under becomes too cumbersome, uh, and therefore you decide to go through the and delist okay that will go through there and save you costs in the future in terms of going through there and applying those rules uh, it should go through as well and make it more difficult to be taken over because you are not publicly traded okay uh, and then because you are then with a smaller number of shareholders because you will have got rid of any institutional shareholders you are then not answering to those institutional shareholders and then removing that old agency problem Okay, so there's not a huge amount within the chapter, but I do think the examiner can get plenty of questions on it. So make sure you read the study text, practice the questions. You've heard it before. And the more work that you do, the easier it will become. Other than that, I'll see you all within the next chapter.